with me through it all When I look back I can see your head You had your hand on me God was with me through it all When I look back I can see your head You had your plan for me It doesn't it gets us ideal. No, this is so Jesus knew mm -hmm. that you know, you know, his whole life, his whole ministry was preparing him for everyone to see what he would do because we know he performed miracles. Yeah, he raised the dead, but what he was known for was the ministry mm -hmm. that he 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 accomplished. Everybody knows that, but he only, not only did he do that, he trained others. So, like, if you look at here in, in Luke chapter ten, and read um, we read verses um one, one through eight, okay? Yep. Okay, you see, it says, "After these things, the Lord, which is Jesus, designated seventy others and sent them out by twos ahead of him into every city and place where he himself was to go. Then he said to them, Yes." The harvest is great, but the workers are few. Therefore, beg the master of the harvest to send out workers into his field, his harvest, sorry, and go look, I'm sending you out as lambs in among wolves. Do not carry a money bag or food pouch or sandals, and do not greet anyone along the road. Says, whenever you enter to a house, say first, may this house have peace. If a friend of a peace is there, your peace will rest upon him, but if there is not, it will return upon you. So eating and drinking the things they provide for the worker, because the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So beg the master to send out more workers in the harvest. So that helps us to see right there, and these are Jesus' words, that to accomplish that task, you know, to preach the good news to everyone, you have to have plenty of work. Was there a set number? He said, it, it didn't specifically say, but it said you know, it should be sufficient to carry it out. So anyone that takes up Christ's torture stake, so to speak, and becomes his servant, or follows in, in, in the Christian, in what Jesus established, they would do the same thing, right? So. Jesus, he preached. So the ones that were up on the hip, they went out to this. So that means if once one makes a dedication to God, understands what he says, and understand that we follow what Jesus says, that they will all do the same. So then that means it just depends on each individual that makes that dedication, recognize this, this commission applies to me. Okay, but why wouldn't you assume that they would still be um they would be becoming a saint i think it was says in verse two the master they would still be under that master they would, they would become a saint okay you understand what i'm saying yeah well you know yeah there's something interesting we'll go back to romans and talking about yeah, let me get this reference material right here, which I thought was interesting. We didn't read it. All of it. Okay, you see here what's, which I thought was interesting. I want to get your thoughts on this. I don't know if you came across this in your research. So, you know, we talk about the Holy Ones, that they're, they're sanctified and cleansed and constituted, you see right here, as Holy Ones by God. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It says he ascribes this condition of holiness to them right from the start of their sanctified course on earth rather than after their death because you have to die to go to heaven right but it says therefore the bible provides no basis for individual or organization to declare people to be holy ones or saints as some bible translations render this expression it says peter says that they that they must be holy because God is holy. So the term holy one applies 
to all those who are brought into union and join airship with, with Jesus. And then it says like more than five centuries late before um, Christ's followers were given this designation, God revealed that people called the holy ones of supreme ones would share in Christ's kingdomship rule. Interesting, huh? So this is basically, sorry, go ahead. School of Beginnings is therefore the Bible provides no basis for an individual or organization. Okay, right here. Career. Yeah. So it's saying only God can call you, declare you holy. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess, yeah. I would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then you know, we got these scriptures here. We can click on them if you want to. It's like this one is First Peter. Don't mind the Swahili because you know I'm in Swahili, but uh, we can <laughs> read it right. <laughs> it pops up there. We can read it right here. Yeah, it says, but, uh, like One fifteen. Yeah. Uh, can we get up to it? And did I go to the wrong one. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. This is the top. This is, but like the holy one who called you, um, become holy yeah. yourselves in, in, in all your conduct. For it's written, you must be holy because I am holy. But what uh -huh. the, the kind of the definition, what it said was interesting. What it said, um, we can go back to it. Go back to, to here. Uh, go back, yeah, go back. Was kind of defining it. So, okay, yeah, it's right here. Okay. When it says um, he ascribes the condition of holiness to them right from the start of their sanctified course on earth mm -hmm. rather than their death. So, yeah. Okay, that, okay, that part. How, how are you taking that part? He ascribes this condition of holiness to them. Yeah. Okay. All right. We look at it from this standpoint. Okay, right before that, it talks about, you know, did G the God brought these ones into this new covenant mm -hmm. with Jesus through his his shed blood, right? Yeah. But you know what you know, we can look at that, but we but I know you know that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so what that helps us to see is this goes back to the standpoint that he ascribes us his position. God's laws, you know, his, he's got different standards. His, his four main attributes are love, power, wisdom, and justice, right? Mm -hmm. So when we think about the nice, what, 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 what Jehovah does, he, even he applies what he applies to us, he applies to himself. He won't break a rule just to make things easy for him or anyone else so his from the start going back all the way to the beginning when he created adam and eve they've created perfect yeah. in that perfect state they had every right you know to communicate and 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 be sons of god so to speak because that's what he made there was no defect in him because but when 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 humankind sinned um adam he sinned basically what happened is we you know, another way of looking at it, you say you missed the mark. We are not perfect. Mm -hmm. So by God's own standards, if his standards here, we are like way down here. And if, so we needed Jesus to bridge that gap. So if, if Jehovah wanted to, he would say, you know what? I'm going to have to talk to you because you're imperfect. Mm -hmm. but, but what he did was he allowed for this covenant through Jesus, who was perfect, and that helps us to see how much God appreciates the sanctity of life. When he gave his life, he opened the way that we could have a condition of being, you know, able to communicate with him on the merits of Jesus' blood. And that's why it's so important what he did. So because of that condition, what he did, what he did, that's why it says that they ascribe this position to them. Now, would that be because 
can you lose your sanctified, I guess, your holy status after you die? Like, because she, she always said that at the end, it says, um, from the start of the sanctified course on earth rather than after the death. So after, yeah. after you die and after you receive it, can you lose right. that condition? Or can it be reversed? No, like, I guess that's talking about, like, okay, after I die, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to receive some people are going to receive that condition of holiness. Right. Now, okay. Yeah. Can you okay. use that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, okay, yeah, because, you know, once again, it talks about this airship. Because just like when Jesus, when Jesus died, he went to heaven. So he became a new creation. So these holy ones, once they die physically on earth, if they go to heaven, you know, you're not a physical body. So then, in a sense, you receive your reward, you know, because, you know, just like Jesus did, he died faithful, showed Jehovah that, you know, he's he's worthy of serving him. So the reward was but by, by being faithful to death, he got his heavenly reward. So like, so, so what this helps us see that normally, you know, because of the state we in, they will have to wait till they die. But because of what Jesus did, that's why he, they were considered to be sanctified and cleansed. And he, Jehovah, allowed them to consider to be holy ones. That's why it says that right from the start of their course of being chosen, he allowed them, you know, he gave them, he, he allowed, he looked at it as he would, you know, once they finished their faithful course. That's something he did. No, he's, he just looked ahead. He said, okay, I, I know you have to stay faithful, but by, by the fact what Jesus did, instead of me waiting, I'm going to allow, I'm gonna look at you from this point that I chose you because, you know, he's the one that chose them to be holy ones. Hmm. Now, how would that differ from glorification? Different from what? Well, no, I, I, I won't say that. Um, so, but you're saying even those, so... But even if he does that, wouldn't that mean that the saints wouldn't kind of turn back? Because wouldn't God have known that they would remain faithful to the end? Oh, okay, okay, right, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, you know, it, you know, see, this is this is this is where it's interesting when when we think it through. That's you know, we as humans, and just like them. Uh, what the Bible calls we're free moral agents, which means we have the right to choose, right? Mm -hmm. Between good and bad. That never changes. And see, that's the whole point why, you know, it's so important that they stay faithful until death. Because, sure, some may, may not stay faithful. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's no, that's just how know how things are you know some people may be faithful look at judas you know jesus prayed over judas like the other one but what did he do he betrayed him mm -hmm. so that no so there wasn't perfect so there was always that that possibility that some may not continue in the same course and even in the scripture it mentions different ones that that didn't stay faithful even in the um in the in the um Christian Greek scriptures or the New Testament, some people call it. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, there's always that possibility. But then again, that's why it's, it's, it's not fate. But that's why, you know, we, we have to, you know, be determined in your course of life, like these holy ones, or some people call them saints, they have to be determined to stay faithful through their life, of course, to receive the reward. So when it says, does that mean that God's putting people, and it says that condition of holiness, is he putting people in that condition of holiness that will turn back? <laughs> he, well, you know, he put them in that because he, like it said, he chose them. But then again, the same with Adam and Eve. If we go back to what they did. Mm -hmm. They had a choice. They could have listened to Satan or not listen to him, correct? But but what they what they chose to do that, 
So, and this is you no know, what's so interesting about how 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 God looks at us. He knows that even though we're in a perfect state, we have you know the faculties, the way He created us, that we can you know make right decisions, yeah. and we can be faithful if we choose to. It's because if it's based on the, uh, another attribute, it's love. Mm-hmm. If 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 you if we love Him then we we'll stay faithful, just like husband and wife. You know, you love your wife, she loves you. You know, somebody could tempt one of you guys to be unfaithful, but you know, no, I'm not doing it because I love my husband. I love my wife. That's the choice you make. Can, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Can you can you pull up Philippians 1, 6? I kind of want to bounce that thought when it's saying that he, he, he puts him in the condition of holiness from the start. You said Philippians 1 6? Yeah, 1 okay. 6. Uh, let me get over here. Philippians 1 6. There we go. Mm-hmm. For I'm confident. For I'm confident of this very thing that the one who started a good work in you will bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Yeah, so that's, that verse came to mind. So when I bounce it off kind of what it's saying there, wouldn't I come to the conclusion that if, if God gave me that condition, I would keep that condition until the day of Christ because He, if he started it, he's going to complete it. So if he chose me, he's going to complete that faith in me until the day of Christ. So I wouldn't turn yeah. back. Right, yeah, yeah. Even like you took, like I said, that's the whole point. Like you know, we can mess up, but like if you die faithful, you always have it. That's the whole point. It's over life course. That's where they're confident, and see, that's what um I was gonna get to also. Why can they be confident? Well, we think about everything that's in the scriptures. They, t- you know, Jehovah and Jesus, they gave us the tools. To be successful, you know, when you read all the letters to the, all the first century kind of uh, congregation, like Philippians, Romans, Acts of the Apostles, um, Thessalonians, all of them, they deal with a lot of problems that were going on. And like even in Romans, it talks about you no, know, there's you no, know, talks about being peaceable, about you no, know, not being impartial. So the Bible, that's why it's so important. It gives us the it's the blueprint or roadmap better word choice to help us to navigate you no know, especially for those that were chosen to be the holy ones because they have such important role to stay faithful so it's not like jehovah jesus said i choose you and leave you on the wall off by yourself he also gave you a manual or a guide to be successful just like when you buy a brand new car and you get that big, thick book nobody ever wants to read. <laughs> but if you but you read and you follow the manual, what the manufacturer says, you're guaranteed to have a long longevity with your vehicle. So, 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 go ahead, no? Um, so would it be wrong? So, why would it be wrong to say that if God chose you? you won't turn back because he is completing the work in you and he's going to do it. Okay. I'm sorry. I think my internet must be unstable. I, I lost you for a second. Yes. Yeah, so I said, you why, said when God, yeah. Why would it be wrong to say, okay, if God chose you, you won't turn back because He's the one that started that good work in you with your faith, and he is going to make sure you make it across the end. Oh, that's correct. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. That's not wrong at all. Okay, but don't you, but don't you, didn't you say earlier that even those saints can turn back? They could, yeah. If, yeah, if they, you know, that's the whole point. That's why it's, if the whole idea is to stay faithful till death, because that's how you get to reward. If they die unfaithful, you know, during their course of life, you know, <laughs> excuse me, some did have problems, but 
and they if they, if they turned back and they died unfaithful and see that's the whole it's just like i said you know it's through your whole course of life if you show the course of faithfulness throughout then you still have that hope but if you die unfaithful you know then that would determine it it's, it's, it's your death but the thing about that is that it's not it's not the holy ones or not us that determine it that's god but he's the judge we can't judge another man can we well, what did that so what did that mean that god is selecting people and making them holy even though he knows that they're going to turn back but does, doesn't that contradict that what this is saying here if he's saying everyone that i made holy is going to remain holy because i'm going to complete that in them like how can they turn back if god's completing that and kind of okay that? yeah yeah well, well see i may be miss more but see god didn't say when he allowed that he he chose them because he saw he know that they have the ability to do that but it's no then it falls on that person that's been chosen you know to the you know to stay faithful so he didn't it's not like he said he knows that they're going to turn back no he had absolute confidence in everyone but once again since we have a choice then it's up to us to see if we're going to live up to it right because you know, and you know, when you look at it, like for example, it's just like for anything. You no, know, we may qualify for a lot of things, but you no, know, if you qualify for something, that means that you're capable to do that. But do you actually complete it? Like for example, it's going to sound like a, a strange consideration, but like. You know, they talk about the Navy SEALs, you know, they go through their candidacy, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, they got to qualify to get to a certain point, right? Mm -hmm. But but not everybody makes it through that. But everyone that starts that class, you know, the, 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 depending on the training, the, whatever the process is, I've never been in the military. But <laughs> once you qualify to get to that point, yeah. to be a, a candidate, you know, there should be any reason why you should not complete it. Yeah, but... Would that, but do you think that's kind of looking at it from the wrong viewpoint where it's kind of on that person and not God completing it? Because if you read that verse again, it says, if I am confident in this very thing that the one started, who, the one who's, who started a good work in you will bring it to completion. So it's not like we bring it to completion. God's going to bring it to completion. So if someone can turn back, doesn't that mean that God's going to start something that he never, he's not going to be able to finish? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. I see. No. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, you know, like God he's got us. Right. He's got to do everything he can to make it, to make, you know, whoever he chose to be successful. Yeah. So he's, he's definitely going to do his part. He's promised that. You know, well, that's just someone... no doubt about it. But if someone turns back, that means that he's going to start something he can't finish in it. Well, if that person starts, you know, if that person turns back, like I said, he's confident that, that he could bring to completion. But, but then on that person, I mean, when you look at them, when you think about it, if you make your dedication, you say you're going to serve him, there's no reason why we shouldn't. <laughs> but the fact that we are imperfect, though, there could be some that determine to say that they don't want to. But that's an individual choice. But as a whole, no. And so, you know, so you have to, and so he knows that he's doing everything to make it successful. Okay, so you don't, you don't believe it's kind of, okay, I want to show you something. I'm gonna see if I can show my screen. Uh, hey, I'm gonna share your screen here. I'll make your co-host. Give me a second. <laughs> 